Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we shall continue to build our pen platformer game. Uh, specifically, we are going to give some kind of movement to our player, right? So remember, we had this game where we had built the arena previously. Uh, those videos are available in case you are interested. Uh, today, uh, we are going to give movement to our player in a very meaningful manner, right? So in particular, in this video, I shall look at creating the gravity effect which basically pulls the you know uh, the player down and also jumping effect exactly the converse of gravity so we you know jump and we fall down right now it turns out that to use these features to to kind of build these features in a nice clean way one has to use my blocks we will also do that right and one has to use some specific options inside my blocks right so this lecture i feel will be a good tutorial to also understand my blocks in a little bit more detail right so so let's get started with this right so remember we previously had this pen platformer game where uh, you know we drew all these obstacles with uh, with with the draw block and of course the the last time we stopped this we did not have a decent motion onto this but now we have built a lot more uh, i mean today we are going to build a lot more so you know for example the player jumping and let's say for example player you know going over the obstacles for example you know let's say it's detecting obstacles and going over the obstacles and so on and so forth right so it goes over the obstacles gets to the next level you know or let's say it falls down so it has to basically do a number of things you know to 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 achieve all of this and this is what we are going to build in the player movement part right so of course we are not starting completely blank we are going to start where we left uh, you know apart from the fact that I have only added the backdrop a little bit different, right? But this is where we left. We had a player which could go only right, right? With when I click the arrow, and you know, here the point was that I was making the levels move as the player reached the right edge of the screen, right? And and but apart from that, nothing was happening. I notice I'm doing whatever I do, nothing happens because the player is programmed to only go right, right? Only go uh, in one direction, and I've added this one level, one uh, statement here, one backdrop here which says you completed the challenge right but it turns out that you know uh, when it comes to the player movement we really do not have to uh, have all those levels in place in the beginning we can keep adding them later on but the movement of player can be done starting from exactly this point right so this is where we'll start right uh, so first thing i'm going to do right is something very simple and it also brings out a very interesting point, right? So the first point that we are going to address, notice right now my player, uh, which is this red block here, has facility to only move right. And that is happening because I have this command. If right arrow press, well, change X by X speed. So basically the movement that I have right now is very simple. You know, when I click the flag, uh, click the right arrow, it starts going right. Uh, that's because I change x by x speed and x speed has been set to 5 as you can see. So it just moves forward, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is to give it a motion which can also bring it backwards. And that's quite simple. I just go and duplicate this thing, right? And I just put instead of right arrow clicked, I say when left arrow clicked. And of course, I must make sure that x changes by minus x speed, right? So I'll do an operator and I'll put minus one times x speed right so basically that will make sure that my player can also come so it goes right but it also comes left right but now this brings me to a very important point that recall when i'm changing levels here right i'm changing levels here i'm always doing wait until x position more than 240 and then set x to minus 200 right a lot of students i saw uh, well, not a lot, but some students I saw use touching edge, right? Now, clearly you can't do that here because if I have ability to go both sides, I can go left and touch the edge and that will make my game go to the next level, which makes no sense, right? So, so in this particular game, there is a reason why we did not use touching edge. Instead, we use, we want to make sure that the sprite ha has reached the extreme right corner before the level is switched like it did now, right? So, so basically, yeah, now my, the sprite has the ability to move both sides, as you can see on the screen. Uh, but that was very simple. All I did was to add uh, this particular point, adding left arrow. But that the point I'm also trying to make is that we do not use touching edge here to shift the levels for this same reason, right? All right, now let's uh, let's continue with our pursuit for gravity, right? So basically, what does gravity do, right? Uh, you know, it's 
if you relate back to your daily life, you know that gravity is a force which pulls all of us down towards the earth. In fact, gravity is a very important force in the universe. It's the force because of which moon is going around the sun, uh, the earth, earth is going around the sun and so on and so forth, right? But from a day-to-day -day practical usage point of view, uh, gravity is a force that makes us fall, right? So if there was no gravity, we will be floating, right? So because of gravity, we fall, right? So evidently, to give gravity effect to our sprite, to our game, right? Also, we will need the sprite to fall, right? And, and let's put together a little bit of code to see how we can make it fall realistically, starting from a very, very simple fall, which we have done in the past, right? So what I'll do here is I'll I'll just add a little bit of code. So I'll say when flag clicked, uh, you know, previously I was sending it to, uh, let's say, minus 113 on Y, but I want it to go much, much higher. So I'll say, let's send it, let's say something like my, let's say something like 180, right? So it goes on top somewhere here, right? When the flag is clicked here and when flag is clicked, I basically say, let's say I use a variable called, I make a variable called y speed. Okay. I make a variable called y speed and I say set y speed to say minus 5, right? And now a very simple fall would be uh, basically go to the control, say forever, change y by y speed, right? So what I'll do is I'll go to the motion blocks and I'll say change y by uh, you know, in the variables, I'll go and say change y by y speed, right? So everything is fine in this. Uh, you know, what this does is that it emulates a very simple fall where, you know, the player starts falling from the top and it keeps coming down, right? However, this is a simple fall which we have done previously, for example, in the catch game. It was fine then because we were just starting to learn, right? But now the question that comes up is that does this emulate how things fall in the real world, right? Now, what do I mean by that, right? Notice in the real world, when things fall, their speed tends to increase, right? And that's because they are being pulled by the earth. There's an acceleration. So their speed towards the ground keeps increasing, right? But our, this model here does not have that effect, right? Every time Y is changing forever by Y speed, which is basically minus five in this case. So our object is falling at a constant speed downwards, right? So how do I fix that, right? How do I make it a little bit more realistic so that becomes like a gravity type of fall, right? And it's actually quite simple. What I'll do is that I will add one statement to the forever loop, which is I'll say change Y speed by minus one, right? So when I do that, when I do that, basically what it's doing is it is setting y, say Y speed to minus five, right? And then Every iteration, every, uh, you know, uh, repetition of this forever loop, Y speed changes by one, right? So when I basically change Y by Y speed, it makes a bigger jump. And notice it will now, if I look at the thing now, it just starts to speed up, right? So it's coming down and it's becoming much, much faster. So it's becoming more realistic in the way things actually fall uh, because of gravity, right? Now, just to see this a little bit more clearly, you can do an experiment. You can set this to zero to start with. Uh, and you'll notice that it looked like it started off very slow and then just speeds up, right? That's that's simply because we have this change Y speed by minus one, which is causing a kind of acceleration because Y is being changed by Y speed. So Y speed, let's say, for example, if it's minus five to start with, it becomes, you know, now it's kind of going somewhere, right? We can actually not choose not to display this. It's easier. So it becomes minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, and hence Y takes bigger and bigger steps downwards, right? And it looks like it's falling, right? It's falling with an increasing speed, right? So that part is very simple, actually. It's not hard. Now, the, the question is, I want, right? I want this object to fall, but once it hits the platform, right? Which is say in this case, the blue color, once it hits the platform, I want it to stop. Right now, let's just see this, how this happens in the game that we are building, right? I mean, in the game that I have noticed this thing falls and it just comes and very nicely stops the moment it touches this blue floor, right? So how do we build this effect, right? Now, you may be guessing correctly that we are going to use the touching block in some form, right? So of course, we have to detect the fact that we have touched blue color and after that, we have to stop this. Say, I will use if touching color blue, I will 
stop this thing right so so how do i do that right let's go to since let's go to the control first and i say if i just put if here and in the sensing block i say if touching color uh now remember to use the dropper tool because what looks kind of similar to your eye may not be the same color so use the dropper tool go select this and select for example let's say this color right so now the colors match so if touching this how do i make it stop now i can just say set y speed to i can do i don't need all of this but i can certainly you know say set y speed to zero right so what this does is that uh this will basically whenever the the red player touches the blue uh, you know the blue uh, let's say platform its speed will become zero and now since y is being changed by y speed y speed would become zero right so the thing will actually stop so let's just see it ourselves what happens is yes the thing stops but it's clearly nowhere as neat as my other game the my finished game where you know it just you look at this right so it has stopped all right but it's kind of hanging in here whereas in this game it stopped and it's just stopped so nicely on top here right and we will do this now right so we will start from here and we'll go and do that thing and and that's where some of the interesting parts of the my blocks will become more evident right but let's just see this code very carefully for a moment in this we are saying remember we are always saying change y by y speed and then change y speed by minus 1 right if touching color blue set y speed to 0 right so y speed will become 0 right and hence when i go to change y by y speed it will not change y and hence it looks like the object has actually stopped right now the question is why did it stop like you know uh, why did it stop let's say in this form right why did it not stop nicely there and the reason really is uh, you know we can understand the reason by making it glow in a slow motion right so what i'll do is i will add a little bit of you know um little bit of weight in this whole loop and you may be it may become more clear so let's say i say weight 0 0.5 seconds and what i want you to notice is this block as it falls the red block as it falls right and you try to see when is the first time that this touching blue color actually happens right so notice it's not touching not touching it's coming in slowly right it's coming in it's going to accelerate it's falling and remember it's going to fall with an increasing step because of this change y speed minus one still not touching still not touching still not touching and then it touches right so the point was that just above this blue floor as also this condition was not getting invoked right so this condition was not coming into play as a result when this condition came into play the player had already crossed quite a bit of ground right so as because of this what happens is that the player has stopped all right right but you know but it has stopped in a way that doesn't look very neat it's kind of gone down into the ground right and if you are you know observant enough you might realize that this method will not work if the speed is very high because it'll just it I mean, it's hard to predict when it will work and it will not work if the speed is too high it will just skip this entire blue and it might stop on the lower one in fact right so we don't want to keep the speed too high but we see that with the speed of say minus 5 and then change of minus 1 it does stop but not in a neat way that we would have liked right so uh, before we go further i want you to take a moment to understand this very carefully and do a small mental exercise right uh, let's say in this code right in this code think about it right what is the value of y speed at this point of time is it a constant or is it fluctuating right so uh, notice if touching color y we are making y speed to zero but in this forever loop we are changing y speed by minus one right so what I want you to notice is the value of y speed once this thing is stopped, right? And for this purpose, to make it a little bit more clear, I have made this weight go here, right? So basically, it changes y by y speed minus by minus one, and then I put a small weight so that we can see this, right? And what you notice is that the the value of y speed is fluctuating between zero and minus one, and this is really happening because this statement sets it to zero, whereas this statement changes it by minus one right so the value keeps changing between zero and minus one but this doesn't matter because okay and this is very very important right this is doesn't matter because when we 
change this y by y speed y speed has already been set to zero right now if you do not believe me uh, let me show you something very interesting if i were to interchange these two right notice that our object will actually not stop right you notice what will happen it will go through it will go through these blue things and the reason it's going through is because uh, what's happening is that before i change the y by y speed right i have changed my y speed to I made my y speed to minus one, right? So which means y will keep on slowly falling towards the ground. It will change by minus one, minus one all the time, and hence it will fall to the ground, right? So this is a small thing, but very, very important. Make sure you get this correct in the right order, right? Otherwise, your object will actually keep falling. Right? We saw why does this, you know, this thing not stop exactly at the top, right? And the reason really is that because we are stopping by touching a color right so the the act the action of setting y speed to zero happens only after the color has been touched right and until the color is not touched then it's it's always like this right so what is the simplest that we can do right what is it that we can do to let's say make it come back right so I, and, and and these words are important i'm saying let's try to somehow pull this back right so what i can do is i can you know uh I can just use a repeat until block and slowly pull this thing up, right? And how do I do that? So what I do is if touching color blue, I say in control statements, I say repeat until, right? Remember repeat until is a block, which is quite powerful because it does something until the condition that is mentioned in this particular block becomes true, right? So what I'll say here is repeat until not touching color blue right so i'll duplicate this part i'll say repeat until not touching color blue set y speed to zero of course but what i can do is to say change y by one right so i'll say change y by one and let's see what this this thing will do right basically it will once it starts touching the color blue as it has happened now and like i said we really cannot control where exactly it touches and hence it this kind of situation is possible so once this starts happening, we start increasing the value of y, y by 1, which means we start lifting up this object until it is no longer touching the color blue, right? So which means it's just sitting right on top of color blue, maybe just one pixel away, just away, and then this thing will stop, right? And then the whole thing will be at sort of at rest. So once we do that, the object will be stationarily sitting on top of the platform so let's just see this ourselves right so we do this and notice it kind of comes back slowly right so once again let's see it falls and then it comes back in a nice like a springy spring motion right but this still looks quite different from what we saw in this game where this object came and just fell down like you know uh, fell down smartly on that particular point right so how do we do that right now it turns out that in scratch we can do this, but we have to use my blocks, right? So, uh, you know, what we will do now is to create a my block with some very, very special features so that we can avoid this effect. And I'll try to explain to you what that means, right? So first thing first, let's just create a block here and let's call it say touch floor, right? So I call this touch floor and this block doesn't need any inputs. However, I'm going to turn this option called run without screen refresh on right now. What this does is that it basically runs this entire loop sort of very quickly so that you do not see the intermediate action. Let me explain that to you in, in just a moment, right? So let's say I did that. And so, of course, because I created this my block, maybe I can push this away because I created this my block. I got this defined just like we have seen this previously. Right, I take this entire code, right? I'll take this entire code and put it here. And of course, I'll remove this, right? So all I've done is to move that code from here to here. And in this forever loop, I will put touch floor, right? So basically, it will call this my block again and again, right? But it will it will basically do the same thing. However, I have added a you know, remember, I have turned on this thing called run without screen refresh, right? So let me see if I can uh, see what happens now, right? So if you notice, we do this and the object seems to be just falling on top, right? So there is obviously some magic happening there, 
and that magic as you can guess is to do with this thing called run without screen refresh right so what does this really do okay now let me just turn this off for the moment and see what's going on okay so if we turn this off it should work just like earlier notice the object falls down and then it slowly goes up right that's because this code is making it go up right now what happens from the logic point of view is no different when we turn on without screen when we turn on run without screen refresh right but what basically goes on is that instead of showing you all the screen positions where the sprite was say here then here 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 it does all of that and then finally shows you a position which is the final position of the sprite right so this this is what run without screen refresh does now it doesn't necessarily mean that the code will run faster so i urge you to be a little bit careful here right it's it's useful only when there are loops and only when there is something being drawn something being displayed on the screen that's when you'll see the effect right here notice if i were to basically if i do not have this run with screen refresh right or as like now or for example when this entire code was in this loop right so what is going to happen here is that i go and i have you know i'm seeing this object falling down and then coming back up right so think about what's happening from the scratch point of view right so scratch or this laptop screen point of view this is drawing you know as this object is coming up it is drawing screen different screens for me right it's drawing one screen where uh, you know the uh, the object is somewhere in the middle right somewhere in the down then middle middle then and so on and so forth and then finally there is one screen which is the screen now where the object has already reached the top right so when i turn on this run without screen refresh option it does not show me the intermediate steps right it just shows me the the final outcome of this loop right so which is why it looks like it has just magically come and sat there but there's no magic here we have gone through this in step by step manner right we have seen what really happens basically when we start touching the floor we keep lifting it up until we are no longer touching the floor and thanks to this run without screen refresh option it just looks like magic right so now as far as this run without screen refresh goes it could be a little bit confusing but like i told you it's useful where you want the final outcome to be shown and where there is a matter of drawing something on the screen or some movement on the screen right so for example here uh, there's a movement of this sprite on the screen uh, since it going it goes through a loop there are multiple intermediate movement points running without screen refresh take takes away all of that right you can do a little bit more search on the internet on on the scratch website to understand more but here it's very very useful right but remember it does not change the logic okay that's a very important point it's it's not doing anything different with respect to logic which is why we developed the code without that and then we just put it in a function with a, in, a, in a my block and said okay now run without screen refresh right so with this basically my gravity part is quite neatly taken care of right so notice my object comes and nicely falls into this right uh, however the next thing i want to do is the uh is the you know uh, is the point to make it jump right so in my code right now it moves only left or right i want to give it capability to jump when i click the up arrow notice right now i'm clicking up arrow nothing is happening right so i will give it the capability to jump using the up arrow right so what i'll do is that i will again create a simple you know uh, when flag click loop so i'll say when flag click uh say control forever right um let's say we'll say we we'll can basically use this thing only we can duplicate this part right and so put it here somewhere and i say if key say up arrow press right now i have a choice right so really i'm going to change y right so i'm going to because jumping basically is changing y so i can change either y or i can change y speed right so i will choose to change y speed to by some number right so for example i can just say i can duplicate this portion don't need to touch floor i can say change y speed by say maybe 10 right now so let's see what this does okay so remember if i change y speed here in this loop y is being changed by y speed right so if i change y speed by 10 it's basically has the effect of changing y by 10 and then y speed changes by 9 so y speed becomes 9 so ch y changes by 9 so effectively by changing y speed i am going to make y change in increments of 10 9 8 7 6 4 and so on and so forth right so so let's see what this does right it's my object stopped here now i move it and it just kind of shoots up in the air right why did that happen 
right? That happened because even though I pressed the arrow only once, Scratch or my laptop, in fact, registered multiple commands, right? So <clears throat> I can avoid that. But before getting there, I want to, you know, uh, spend a moment on why did I not just change the Y? Instead, why did I change the Y speed, right? So I could have very well done. For example, I could have said change Y by some large number, right? Now, the reason I did not do that is that because remember, I am trying to emulate gravity here, right? And if there is gravity, it means that when object flies up, when object goes up, its speed slowly decreases. Just like when object falls down, its speed slowly increases. When an object is fly, uh, going up, its, its speed slowly increases. So that's the effect that I want to create, slowly decreases. And that's the effect I want to create, right? So if I did, let's say if I did change Y by some large number, it will change, but the jump will become extremely asymmetric because jumping up will be immediate, jumping down will be very slow, right? So to do so, we are done. Uh, change y speed by 10 and like i said uh, this has the effect of you know changing so these two loops have to be seen together right y speed changes by 10 so y changes by 10 but then y speed becomes 9 right and then y changes by 9 then y changes by 8 and so on and so forth right so it, it creates a very nice symmetric jump uh, along with gravity these two kind of give a nice effect but we saw one problem that you know uh, our basically our um, Sprite just jumps somewhere very high. That's because in in picking up one jump, it has actually picked up many, many jumps, right? Because my arrow got clicked many times, right? So what can I do here? It turns out that I can make my sprite jump only when it is near the floor, right? So what I can do is I can, you know, uh, let's say I can create, a, let's say a, a variable called close to ground right so i'll say a variable close to ground right I'll, I'll let me just create this variable i'll say create a variable called let's say make a variable called close to ground right so let's say i, I create this variable called close to ground and the purpose of this variable is to tell me whether my sprite is near the platform or not right so if it's near the platform i allow it to jump if it is not near the platform then i do not allow it to jump right so what i'll do is that i will you know, uh, let's say I will put a condition here first, right? So in the control loop, I'll put a condition if, right? If, uh, let's say, you know, close to ground, close to ground is my variable. So if close to ground is, is say, you know, uh, let's say it's zero. So it's one. So close to ground is one. Then I allow it to jump. And then obviously immediately as it jumps, I should set this close to ground to zero so that I know that I have already jumped. I don't want to give it one more jump. So I put this set close to ground to zero. To ground. Where do I set this close to ground to one? So basically, whenever I'm touching the floor, I set this to one, right? So with this, I'll have a situation where when my player touches the floor, right, it becomes close to ground, right? Remember when it's fallen down and it has touched the floor, definitely it is coming to this function. It has set close, the, close to ground to one. Now, if I click my up arrow, it will jump. That's because close to ground wing one is a condition for jumping to happen. And then I immediately select close the ground to zero, right? So if I did this, now notice what happens is, right? I, I have a nice jumping player, right? It's, it's jumping sort of like not very high, but to make it jump higher, what I can do is to change my Y by say is Y speed by 15, right? Let's say. So if I did that, now player gets a fairly decent jump, right? And the moment, uh, you know, I, so notice when the player is touching the platform, it close to ground has become one. The moment I put this jump, it becomes zero, right? Now it turns out that in some games, right, you may want to make this, let's say, jump uh, even when it's, close to the ground. Now, this happens when you are moving up an incline, right? So, for example, when you're moving down an incline, you may want to jump even though it's not really touching the floor, right? So, this code can be modified to some extent to give it that capability. Uh, however, my close to ground will have to be a little bit more graded. So, right now, I'm just telling, is it close to the ground or is it not close to the ground? What I could do is to measure how far I am from the ground and accordingly, I will move. Uh, I will, uh, you know, uh, I will... Uh, jump right now one thing i want to before i leave uh close this video right i want to you to notice is that this particular code that we have given will in fact also work when the 
sprite is moving up on an incline right so the reason is because whenever it touches the floor it just basically stays on top of the floor let me see if i can uh, you know demonstrate that here so so let's say i you know i enhance my arena just to illustrate here right let's say i have a code i have an arena which has got an inclined line right now notice my sprite will nicely go up on top of that because all that is happening is that every time it's touching the floor it's just lifting itself up right so it's able to go up the sprite in fact it will come down but not so it will have a slight jumpiness in this thing uh, so you could in fact use inclined arenas as well right in this game so all right so let's just recap what we have done so far uh, we gave some basic movement to our sprite right we basically made it go uh, let me get back my arena to the regular stuff right i'll remove this right so i gave my capability gave my sprite the capability to move left and right right then we gave it gravity and then we gave it jump and for gravity we basically started from first principles from a very simple fall which we have done previously in the catch game but we created an effect where the speed increases uh, where the you know the speed increases as the fall happens and then we saw that you know this thing can be used to stop it but to stop it neatly we use this feature called run without screen refresh right which is a powerful scratch feature which relates to doing you know which relates to blo my blocks like i said use it when you have to do something on the screen right so which means like in this case displaying the position on the screen it does does it one shot and shows it to you the final result so it looks very nice right finally we are detecting if the object is close to the ground and if so we are making it jump right so and by the jump we are doing by changing the y speed not y because remember there is a gravity effect going on we do not want the upward motion to look very very different from the downward motion right so with this uh, we have given basic movements of a sprite we will come back with the next video and see how we can enhance these uh, you know we can uh, how we can build this further to also do let's say uh, obstacle detection and also a ceiling detection all right hopefully you enjoy this video take care